Hi, my name is Laurel of Mountain Laurel Stitches, and this is a YouTube channel about cross-stitch. It has been a little bit of an update since my last video. Um, my cat is here to help lend some support. <laughs> this is Jelly. Um, the school year has started, and things are well underway there. I have a book fair coming up in a couple of weeks, so that has taken a lot of my time and attention, but I have managed to finish two things and I have a fully finished object, an FFO, along with a pretty big haul for this video as I was able to go to Hobby House Needleworks about two weeks ago. So um, stay tuned for a lot of fabric. And at the end of my videos, I like to show a brief uh, book, book talk for elementary school students and middle school students. So if you're interested in that, stick around towards the end. I have two autumn related finishes. One of them is Autumnal Sampler by Little Robin Designs. And it's done. Yay, that's it looks so good. And this is the one that says life starts all over again when it gets crisp in the fall. I don't know about you, but it has we've had very few crisp days here in Virginia. Uh, it was 70 yesterday. So I'm really looking forward to that cooler weather. A lot of the leaves have already dropped. So it's like, you know, no leaves on the trees, but it's 70 outside. It's very confusing. <laughs> um, and it's kind of hard to get into any like holiday sphere when it's 70 degrees outside. It doesn't really feel like it's going to be Thanksgiving in like 11 days and then Christmas after that. Um, but this is done. This is stitched all with the called for colors. And this is on 32 count stormy night. The other one I finished was Cat Magic by Fox and Rabbit Designs. This is stitched on Fox and Rabbit Designs uh, own brand of linen. This is 40 count Tibuchina. Again, all the called for colors. The only change I made is that the cat used to have green eyes in the pattern, but I've never seen a green eyed Siamese cat, so I made it blue. And I don't know what color blue I chose. It was just like, whatever I had seen on a Siamese before. <laughs> this was a cute little finish, although 40 count was difficult for me, especially with the white stitches. When I look at it now, it doesn't look too bad, but I definitely had some mistakes. I'm fine with it. It's not for anyone else. It's not a gift. Uh, but I think from a distance, you really can't tell. And then my big FFO, which I did not finish myself, but I had framed, is Shenandoah. I finally got this back. This is Shenandoah by Carriage House Samplings. I'll try to get without the ring light. And it looks so good. I'm trying to get a picture. <laughs> This was um, done at Total Framing here in Virginia, and it took about three months to do. I went in, I picked out the wood frame. I really wanted it to be simple looking and um, complement the piece. This is, has museum glass on it, which I really don't think you could tell. At first I thought maybe they forgot to put glass or forgot to ask for glass, and then nope, it's definitely there. I think this just looks so beautiful. And it is my first ever framed cross-stitch piece. I can't wait to find a place in her house to put this. The only change that I made to this piece, this is stitched on 32 count, or no, 28 count Wren by Picture This Plus using DMCs. And the only thing I changed, well, I guess I made more than one change. I changed the horse's nose. I made it like a fuller looking nose. And then I think I changed the front leg to not be as thin. And then I put in the words Harrisonburg, Virginia, instead of um, whatever it said, like across the wide Missouri or something like that. But I think it looks amazing. And I'm really happy with it. I think it was worth that three month wait. Okay, I hear a cat doing bad stuff. So I'm going to pause. Since my last video, I have not been stitching nearly as much as I would want to. I've just felt like there's always something I should be doing instead or 
you know, tasks or errands or things for work or being a little too tired when I got home to think about stitching. And I was also having a lot of trouble with my whips. They, I would work on them and then it seemed like every single one I touched, I made mistakes on. And then I have to rip out all the time that I'd spent on it, like the last two or three days. And I would get frustrated. And then I would move on to the next whip and the same thing would happen. So I like haven't actually picked up any stitching in maybe like two or three weeks. I bought stuff, so I'm keeping the hope alive, but um, I haven't really stitched nearly as much as I wanted to because I feel like I'm just getting into these like stumbling blocks with, with it. So maybe it's just because I haven't been doing it as consistently or maybe it's just, you know, life or maybe I haven't really found a project that I am willing to do all the, you know, ripping out stitches on and then going back to and fixing it and then moving on because it just seems like whenever I come across a mistake I've made, like that project after I've ripped out all the mistakes now has to go into a timeout so I can like be more calm about it when I return to it. That probably sounds like really silly, but uh, I haven't been making as much progress as I would have hoped, but I have worked on stuff. Uh, the one I worked on was Autumnal Sampler by Willow House Samplings. Here's a picture. This is the controversial pattern of do the, I guess it's the colors that they called for when you finally pull them and should look at them on the fabric. They're not, they don't look like the picture. Uh, Bridget the museum stitcher and I were doing, starting this together and then like she's already finished hers. <laughs> So you can see what color she picked for her pumpkin. I still have not decided what color to pick for my pumpkin. Right now I'm stitching everything else the same color and then I'm saving the pumpkin for the last little bit and then I'll decide. But here's my progress. This is stitched on maybe 20 count linen. Um, I hand dyed it myself and I made so many mistakes on this border. So I think here's what I did is like, I started stitching it one way and then I thought, oh, you know, it'd be easier for my mind if I turn this and then I stitched it this way. And then what if I came back and I turned it and I stitched it this way? And that sounds like a good idea to do. But when I had it in my hand, the, the way that it's gonna be framed, all the stitches on the sides laid the wrong direction because I had been turning it. I don't know if that makes any sense. Basically, when you do the stitches, they're supposed to go in the same direction one way, and then you come back and there's, they go, you go over them the other way. And when you look at a piece, if you don't do that, some stitches stand out more than others. So I could definitely see that there were some wonky ones on the side, so I had to pull everything out. I had to go like all the way back down here and I just then I stitched it all the way back up so it looks like I've done nothing <laughs> of course uh, this is an enjoyable piece I don't really like borders though I think that's like not really the fun part of cross stitch necessary but not as fun I wanted to do the pumpkin uh, but I'm trying to make myself like eat my veggies do the border first <laughs> before getting to the good parts I feel like that would motivate me to keep going but that is my progress. The other things I've been working on, seasonal etchings. I don't know if I showed this in my last video. This is by Heart and Hand. I started working on it, but I, I just have this feeling that I've messed up somewhere. Something just doesn't seem right, and I probably should just pull it all out and start all over, but something's really weird about this bird's tail. It just seems odd to me. I like I keep counting it and I think the stitches are right, but I'm not convinced. So this one has also been in timeout until I can come back to it with like clear eyes. It looks good right now. Uh, I'm not sure what this fabric is. Oh, 32 count Heartland by Picture This Plus. And then I have Autumn Quaker by Leela Studio. Let me go grab the pattern. This is that giant Halloween one. 
a lot of people like to start it this time of year. This is my second oldest whip from 2020. And my goal was to do like two motifs a week and then be done by Halloween. It did not happen. This is my progress. And what I did, I think this is what happened. I started doing motifs kind of sporadically. So it's kind of hard to show. Um, I had a problem with one of the cats up top, the diarrhea cat, as it's affectionately called now, the one below the ghost. And I just decided to keep going. So I did the heart below it. And then there was a motif below that, which is now gone because I ripped it out. And so I stitched that motif. And then I stitched a little black cat here by the houses. And after I stitched a little black cat, I realized it did not line up with the rest of the houses. Like it was two stitches off. So if I were to frame it, it'd be very clear that these two motifs were not making a line of like edges. So I had to pull it all out and try to redo it. And I only got the second cat in, but that kind of stalled my progress. I don't know if I'll finish it this year. It would be nice to say like 2022 on it because Something about three years on a project doesn't sound good. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. It is fun to do. I think it just made me sad and I needed to take a break. So I have one more whip. This is the Cricut Collection Shepherdess. And this is the one that I'm trying to do uh, color conversion on because it's red and, and blue and stuff and I took a picture of the pattern I'll put it right here it is very red and very navy and I just didn't really like the way that it looked so I have tried to do it by myself on my own I'm gonna grab that super quick so this is my attempt at making a color conversion this is stitched on Sand Dollar 32 Count Linen by Be Stitch Me. And I changed the hood of her um, cape to be green. I'm doing a lot of greens and golds. I kept their hair, her hair the same, but as I was stitching the, I don't know what that is, like a pom-pom that goes on top of her cloak, and I was stitching the sleeves, I noticed that it's actually kind of hard to see that, like from a distance. And there's a lot of white in her outfit. And then the sheep, Barnaby, who we know is very naughty, um, is also white. And I tried different whites. I tried bright whites, creams, and I think from a distance, it just gets lost in this fabric. So I'm going to have to choose a different fabric to do this on. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do, but that was one of my stumbling blocks. I'm glad that I tried, I think, that it was good to, to see it and look at it and say, oh, I, I tried something, it didn't work, and it'll help me decide on the next one. So those are my whips, and now I have a pretty big haul that I'm gonna get ready to show. So I bought a couple of things since my last plus two video. Some things I have are like subscriptions of, of just fabric at the month clubs. And I bought a couple of things off of Etsy. And then over like late October, we were able to go to New York for a couple of days, uh, like upstate Rochester area. And while we were there, I said, well, I think there's a cross stitch shop around here, like a pretty well known one. Maybe we can stop by. And so we did, and I um, have a problem saying no to fabric. So I bought quite a few things. Uh, before I get to showing you those, I'm just gonna show you the subscriptions uh, of like the fabric of the months. I signed up for a three month subscription to Xju Design Fabrics. I know that she is very well known in the cross stitch community for kind of like primitive colors. And uh, she, used to have a fabric of the month club, but it 
all the spots got taken. So I saw a message on Instagram one day that said she had like a couple of spots open. And so I signed up for a three month club because I feel like I'm starting to get to the point where I don't really need to keep buying fabric. And I signed up for the bright colorway. And so when you're thinking of like bright colors, I'm thinking of like pink, maybe purple, maybe like orange. Like it's Halloween. I was thinking like, okay, probably going to be like a Halloween-ish fabric. And I got this color. It's espresso. And like I'm not mad, but I was not expecting to get brown from the bright colorway. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. I think it'd probably look really good with a white color. Uh, it's definitely usable. I just was not expecting brown for a bright colorway. But we'll see what the next couple of months, I have two more months after that. So we'll see what the next couple of months are. It does feel really nice and soft. The other fabric of the month club that I've been uh, in is Be Stitch Me's. And I do the alternating brights and primitives so sometimes they're like really bright sometimes they're like you know more neutral colors and I think this was October this is whimsical I think that's showing up a little bit more purple than it is she always has really nice pieces I switched mine to be a linen instead of a Lugana because linen tends to dye a little bit more like a darker and I like that I like the modeling a lot more and then I was on Etsy and I don't really have that many cross stitch bags like project bags so I got this these two from little boat design little boat 88 and it is a vinyl cross stitch bag the inside has uh, cowboy boots and then the back of it has like painted horses and the eight-year-old in me loves this this is exactly what I would want and it came with this little um, thread keeper pouch to put your loose threads in which I was not expecting. So that was a nice bonus. And then I also bought from her a Teresa Kogut, Kogut um, fabric bag with the witches and the pumpkins and the black cats. I've seen this on a couple of people's floss tubes. So I needed to have one too. I could not miss out. And then on the inside is a different kind of fabric. I love this. I don't even know what to put in here. It's just been sitting off to the side because I like looking at it. And it also came with a matching fabric pouch. It's really well made. And these, this one shipped from Canada, so it did take a little bit of time. I think it took maybe like two or three weeks to get here. That's fine. That's worth the wait. So now I'm going to talk about my uh, trip to Hobby House Needleworks in New York. Uh, it was, I'll put like a picture here, uh, it's a cute little shop, it has a ton of fabric, like I have not ever seen that much fabric inside of a cross stitch store before. I took a picture of like one wall of fabric, but that is one of like two or three in the back, um, it's like a husband and wife who run the shop, in the back the husband was, or the shop owner was at the, this huge like table and just tons of fabric piled on top that uh, he was like surging the edges of or cutting to be a certain length and it was just anything you wanted it was probably there so I bought a lot of fabric um, mostly primitive hair because I haven't really seen primitive hair like sometimes it's in Etsy shops but you can maybe find like one of the the pieces of fabric that they use in their patterns and then you know you have to go to another shop to find another so it was there's just so many there and primitive hair seems to do a lot of 30 count I think everything I have is 30 count which is fine with me it's easier to see so I'm going to show you what I got the first one is mermaid soul and I took this out of the packages let's see if I 
It's like a nice blue green color. And they come like wrapped up, so I have to kind of like undo them a little bit. This one is Bolin linen, and this is the one that has like the writing on it. I think that's so cool. And just an FYI, um, I just took this out to put on the bed for the video, and my cat was digging into this fabric because he. It does have a little bit of a smell. I don't know if it's the smell of the store um, because they had the dog, like a couple of dogs in the store, not really messing with anything or if this is just like the smell of the dye or my cat liked it. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. Then I got Old Salem. This is like parchment color. Oh, that looks so good. And I got, um, this says that's Rainbow Collection, Mermaid Bay. It's going to be a big mess to clean up later. <laughs> this is kind of like a periwinkle blue, uh, like purple blue. Try to do it this way. I think that's nice. It's like really soft looking. And then the last one by them is Tempest. And this is a little bit darker with some splotches. Sorry, it's wrinkly. And then I got more fabric, which I will have to grab real quick. While I was there, I picked up uh, an opalescent. I never had an op used an opalescent before. This one is 28 count, which is white linen by Zweigart. You can kind of see it's shimmery. I think this would be really pretty for like Christmas or something, like some Christmas ornaments. And then the last piece of fabric I bought was uh, Haunted by Seraphim Fabrics. And this looks like a really good a replacement for murky by picture this plus this is 32 count linen I know that it's really hard to get picture this plus because just like the dyeing and the fabric shortages and supply chains and all that but I think this would be a really good piece to use for like the Halloween Quaker or something spooky after that I just picked up a lot of charts while I was there some charts I actually had difficulty finding, and that they had, um, one of them was The Fox by Primitive Hair um, from their Spirit of the Woods collection, or Spirits of the Woods collection back in 2018. And they did like a bear and I think an eagle and a couple other ones, but they did a fox and he is adorable. This one is stitched on the Bolin fabric, the one that I bought. So I plan on doing it on that one. I bought the fox one because in Virginia, especially where we live, it's called like hunt country. And we have a lot of foxes out here and there are a lot of like fox symbols. So I thought that was good for where we are in our life right now. Beyond that, I have Blue Flowers Spring Forest Scrapbook Part 2 with the snail and the raccoons, the bear. I don't know what this animal is. Is this a fox? Is this... I don't know. It says that there are foxes in the design. But why is he climbing a flower? Or should I not think too deeply about the meaning of things? It's just for fun. This one is my husband picked out because my husband enables me in cross stitch shops and says, oh, that's all you're getting? I thought you were going to get more. And then I get more. This one is Tilly the Goat by Teresa Kogut. A cute little goat. There's a lot of colors in this piece. 
there's like 15. You wouldn't know. I wouldn't think that originally by looking at it. And then another Teresa Cogut. This one is Hazel's Halloween Friends. And that is a um, witch with a black cat and an orange pumpkin. Which, you know, as if you've been watching my channel for a while, we got a pumpkin and a black cat. I'm already add to cart. This was a little bit of a different take on Halloween. This is by Collection Tralala. And I'm not going to try to say this in an accent. Mutton de Halloween. This is of a um, witch riding a sheep. Which I think is actually really cute. Kind of like a fun, whimsical take on Halloween. I like the fun stuff. I don't like the gory stuff. This one I think is really hard to see, so I'm going to try to insert a picture. This is Chessie and Me, Stella Sleigh Ride. I think that's a really awkward picture, so I'm going to put a picture here. Hopefully I can find it, not sure. Then I have um, OMG Tree by Dirty Annie Designs. Is that right? Yes. And this is... The cat and a Christmas tree, and it comes with buttons, and it says, OMG, they got me a whole tree. And this looks like just the kind of thing I need to stitch to get out of my, like, stitching error bad luck phase that I'm going through. Because this looks like, you know what, you're probably not going to mess up. It's just a couple of things. You can do the words. <laughs> it is Christmas. I don't really have much Christmas stuff. Then I think a lot of us have seen this one. This is Autumn Cloche by Hello by Liz Matthews. It's beautiful. More pumpkins. So many beautiful autumn colors. It's on 40 count. I will not be doing that. Oh, on the back she wrote how many stitches it is. And I feel like I just didn't need to know. I don't, I'm not someone who like counts how many hours I do my stitching. Um, I think that would make me like not stitch if I knew. Uh, some people like to do that and um, like they like to count the things they do and uh, like that's enjoyable. This is 18,000 stitches. And yeah. I don't know how I feel about knowing that number. <laughs> uh, this one I've been looking everywhere for. Uh, this one is Witch Training Academy by Kathy Barrick. And it's a giant crescent moon with witches learning how to fly broomsticks and pumpkins and a black cat. And this is stitched on seaweed by Fox and Rabbit. It seems like, looking at the back of her patterns, it seems like she really likes seaweed. Kathy Barrett really likes seaweed this time around. Because the next pattern I got also is on seaweed. Wild flowers. And I wouldn't normally go for something like this because it's pretty prim for me. But I just like how it kind of stands out on the fabric. It's a very 3D effect and the flowers really pop on this seaweed color. I am not going to be doing... June 10th, 1822 at the top. I'll probably do a different date. But I like that piece a lot. And there's only a couple of colors. So that is my haul. Thanks for staying around for all of that. I am done with the cross stitch right now. So thanks for joining me. I'm gonna move on to my book talk. If you're not interested, you are welcome to go to another floss tube and thanks for spending some time just hanging out. The book that I chose this time is loosely related to Veterans Day. It is called 21 Steps Guarding the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. And it is about the sentinels who guard the tomb, why we have a tomb dedicated to unknown soldiers, and um, why it's even being guarded. And I did this lesson, I read this book to my students in fourth and fifth grade over the last couple of weeks because we have a Veterans Day celebration at our school where 
um, veterans in the community and family members are invited in and we have a celebration. We, the students sing patriotic songs, a song for every branch of the military. And what I was finding was leading up until the celebration, um, because of the pandemic, because students were taught from home, um, many of them had not ever had veterans come into our school. And so there was a lack of connection to them and therefore a lack of respect going on. So I decided to do a series of lessons on uh, memorials, specifically war memorials, and how do we remember loss in our country. So Tomb of the Unknown Soldier was one of the lessons that we did. So we watched videos on how Sentinels train, how they are chosen, how they apply to be the Tomb Guard. We also watched videos on what happens if the Tomb Guard um, has to talk to people who choose to not show respect at the uh, Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. And uh, we also did the Vietnam Veterans Memorial and then kind of looked at both memorials and try to determine why is one guarded, why is one not, why is one unknown soldier guarded and remembered, and how did they remember 58,000 soldiers and personnel who died. And um, from those lessons, students were able to gain a bit more understanding and background knowledge on the importance of um, Veterans Day and remembering and uh, gratitude towards veterans. So I think that, I think that was the, <laughs> worked out in the end, but 21 steps is a great introduction into, um, just remembering and, you know, how do we honor loss in our country? So I think it's a great, for, great book for our collection. I think it's a great book to just read one-on-one -on -one, and it's timely for today. So if you have made it this far into the video, um, thanks. <laughs> Let me know what your, your plans are for today. If you're doing any stitching, what are you stitching on? Um, just hope you have a great rest of your day and um, thanks for joining me. Bye.